One of the first things I did after finding out I was gonna be part of the series was I looked it up on IMDb and I read the comments. And so many of them were, this is feminist propaganda. And I was like, this is the reason the show needs to exist. The disparity between the amount of actors on screen and the amount of actresses on screen is just appalling. These are the stories that just don't get to be told because networks are worried about having a show with for, for women. I mean, this show goes some way to address that or redress the balance. It's not about what we're wearing and, you know, the guys that we're flirting with. It's about this story. It's about women solving crime in the 1950s. The more female-led shows there are, the better, because it shows that people, there's an appetite for them. People will watch them. They get huge viewing figures. They're popular. There's no reason not to make them. I'm a little bit of a history nerd, so I sort of dove in um, pretty deeply into learning about the history of not just the code breaking but also the area where Iris and her family lived which is the Fillmore district in San Francisco. I'm learning so much about stateside post-war. I'm learning just the situation in America concurrent with the situation in England, um, how it has affected society. The Fillmore was once your home too. Before the war came and they took it away, we swooped in and bought our homes for pennies on the dollar. I spoke to some people down there to kind of get a sense of what that area was like. And I was really impressed and amazed at how lively a community it was at that time. And they're still fighting to kind of bring that back because it was sort of raised through the 60s and 70s and, and demolished, which you see, you see tones of that starting in our show. With regards to the code-breaking elements of the show, of course I watched the original series and learned a little bit about Bletchley Park and all of the women that were involved in the code-breaking efforts in the, the UK, but we've just recently now come to realize how many Americans were involved in that process once the Americans joined the war in 42. There was thousands of women that were involved in um, code-breaking in a place called Arlington Hall, uh, which was on the East Coast in, I believe, Washington or Virginia. And then they had some code-breaking centers in Hawaii, and there was a language school based out of the Presidio um, in San Francisco uh, that were prim primarily Japanese Americans were working in. There was an African-American unit, an entirely African-American unit, that even the women who worked there didn't really know about. They pulled this unit together primarily because uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said we need to have we need to represent African Americans in Arlington Hall. I did not something I learned about in school or I had ever really come across. They were doing it to basically find out about which companies in the US were doing business with Hitler or Mitsubishi. The women were recruited in much the same ways as they were being recruited at, for Bletchley, you know, putting ads in newspapers, can you do this crossword, or do you love math, or, you know, can you solve this puzzle in less than 10 minutes? The same familiar formality is here, but after that we kept getting stuck. Why? A shift in the frequency of occurrence. They had huge arguments about who they should recruit, so they didn't want anyone from problematic backgrounds and countries specifically uh, Jews, Poles, no pacifists, um, very, very, very few African Americans. So it was a very kind of white elitist group. The women were given such, they were so important in the code breaking process, but they were given all the kind of mundane female jobs. So the kind of men got the glory and they kind of were the, the worker bees. You know, history is written by winners. Um, and it's so first-hand accounts and it's kind of men blowing their own trumpets about, you know, all their amazing work during the war. So I was just amazed at how little information there was about them. Learning about women coders is absolutely important. These amazing, incredible, intelligent women were severely overlooked because they were women. Yeah, they had to sign the Official Secrets Act, so that wasn't... Uh, that wasn't repealed until 1977, I think it was. In the war, you were clerical. Enhanced clerical. I'm not sure I quite understand. Well, it means, sir, that I did more than I can say. It was a great example of dignity, I think, these women showed. Um, that even when they could have cashed in, I suppose, on, on their own stories, they never did and never would. And that's, that's something that we lack in modern culture, I believe. You know, women are kind of often painted as these flippity gibbet gossips who can't keep their mouths shut about stuff, but actually it turns out that that's not true.